This is the second part of our three-part AWS Network Security video series, Network Access Control List or NACL. And if you are a network engineer, you will probably be more familiar with the configuration concepts. So let's begin. Now, let's talk about NACL or Network ACL. Now, we're going to compare the difference between security groups and NACL configuration and functions as well. Okay, so we are here in our WordPress URL, okay, and um, we tested it's working. Both uh, the web application only, which is uh, running Apache, and uh, the actual web application, which is a blog application connected to MySQL database. Now, this is completely working, okay, no doubt. But what we're going to do is we're going to configure a NACL, which by default is not active, okay? So what I will do first is I'm going to open another tab, but this one I will use VPC. But, and by the way, I can append my URL slash VPC, or I can just search VPC it will do searching and uh, from the result i will just click vpc okay there you go so vpc service appeared and uh, i just selected it from here okay it will redirect excuse me redirect us to vpc management console page okay and again there is no knuckle configuration or at least i don't know there's no NACL configuration under EC2 console page, but via VPC, you will see this under under security. There you go. So security, NACL, or network ACL. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click NACL. And uh, how many NACL do we have here? Uh, we have uh, NACL, ASL, ID, both are default. Well, this two NACL, existing NACL here, these are two defaults. And we're not going to use this. We're going to create a new one. So what I'm going to do first is I will create a new network ACL or NACL. And I'm going to name this. LB or load balancer NACL and uh, I'm going to associate this to a VPC. Our VPC named LabVPC and we have a CIDR of 10.10.0.0/16. Okay, and uh, this load balancer, the load balancer um given IP address or at IP address range or subnet is 10.10.1.0. Okay, and uh, okay, so this is our new NACL associated to our VPC. I will just create NACL and from here, we're going to add rules, okay? And uh, you know what? Before we add rules, let's just create two new NACLs. Um, the other NACLs is named Web Server NACL, okay? And uh, it's also associated to VPC Lab or Lab VPC. I'm gonna create Network ACL and we have another NACL, which is named database server NACL. And again, I associate this to LabVPC. Okay, so there you go. We have now three NACLs. Now, even if I go to our web applications, this will still gonna work. Why? Because we just created NACLs, but we haven't associated it yet. Think of this as uh, if you're familiar with routers and firewalls, this is your policy slash rules. And um, you have to apply it, okay? In a router, you have to apply it in an interface. But here in AWS, we haven't really applied it yet, okay? So what we're going to do first is we're going to configure load balancer um, knuckle. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, inbound rules, which is an explicit deny all you see that it's denying all traffic okay now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna edit this inbound rules and uh, since this is the knuckle i will add excuse me i will 
yeah, uh, one of the difference between NACL and SG. For NACL, we need to add the rule number, okay? And uh, as you can see, you can specify the action, allow or deny, okay? But the default is allow because as I mentioned, they already have uh, explicit deny all rule. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I will allow 443, where is that? Okay, HTTPS 443. And the source is any, okay, all IP address because we are allowing inbound traffic from the public network slash internet. Okay, and the next one will be, um, this is a custom port. Custom port, this is, uh, not custom port, uh, custom TCP, there you go. Uh, this is the uh, dynamic ports 1024 to 65535. Okay, we need this because uh, this is a return traffic because the load balancer will be sending traffic to the subnet of our web server. The web server subnet is 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Okay, so I'm going to click save changes now. There you go. And uh, what I will do next is I'm going to um, enable subnet association. Okay, this is where we associate this NACL to a subnet, meaning I'm going to apply this to our network. And this network is the load balancer network. Well, we have two load balancer subnets here. Um, the reason why this is for redundancy in this lab, in this example, we are only using one load balancer. Okay. And most probably the first one, load balancer subnet one. Okay. And even if I unselect this, it will still work. Okay. So I'm going to click save changes. So we just applied our first tackle to our subnet. Now let's test. So let's go back to our application. Okay. I'm, I just hit refresh. Oh, it seems like the web server is not responding. And why is that? Okay. So, so look at that. It's not responding and uh, it was working a minute ago, right? We just added this new configuration, the load balancer knuckle, and it started not to work. And why is that? Well, because we just allowed the incoming traffic, okay, which is where specific, okay, TCP 443. So we are just saying all public network, excuse me, um, all IPs from the public network, from any IP range, you can access us via TCP 443. Okay, as well as TCP 1024 to 65535, but this is only from 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network. Okay, and as you can see, it's not getting any response. This will time out as well. There you go. So what I'm going to do is we just allow inbound. So therefore, we will also allow the outbound. Okay, I'm going to allow outbound traffic now. I will add uh, two new rules, 100 and 101. The first rule will be, um, okay, so the first rule will be the 1024-65535. This is the response traffic from the public network, okay, from the internet. And the destination is, uh, yeah, we're not going to change this. It's quadruple zero slash zero, okay, all traffic. And uh, I will also um, allow outbound rules connecting to port 443. Uh, this is not custom. This is, well, it will just be more specific HTTPS port 443. And this is to 10.10.10.0 slash 24 to our web server network. Okay. So I'm going to click save changes now. So what I did, what I simply did is I allowed the return traffic. Okay. From the public network to our load balancer. And take note, what's facing uh, the internet is not the web server, but it's the load balancer, okay? And as you can see, we can now access both the website or the web page, the test Apache page, and uh, the actual application, the blog uh, web page. Next, we want to create an ACL or an, a excuse me, ACL rules to our web server, okay? So our web server named web server knuckle um it has also the same default configuration the explicit deny all what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna edit the inbound rules i'm gonna add two new rules 
100 and 101 okay so for our web rules or inbound rules what I will allow is HTTPS again and the reason why this is working because we haven't really associated that knuckle okay so this is more of a best practices we're just gonna restrict all of these IP address or subnet from one security group to one actually that's what we did in security group um, demo that this is not security group uh, this is more of IP address or subnet uh, policy and configuration it's still a best practice although this is a bit conversum that's why we have the security group for a better and easier uh, policy creation or security policy creation anyway so um, the 100 rule number is we're going to allow inbound traffic okay inbound traffic from all okay um, I'm gonna talk about this why in a separate video we're gonna dissect why we need all of these uh, rules okay and why we need to identify the networks the 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 the 20.0 etc so what I'm gonna do next is um, I allow the port 443 I will also allow the custom port or custom TCP excuse me okay uh, this is the, for the return traffic okay this time I will be specify I will be specific to 10.10 dot 20 dot zero slash 24 okay um and why is that because i will be allowing traffic coming from our database server okay so i'm gonna save this there you go okay and uh, i will test our application okay i'm gonna hit refresh and uh, oh the reason why it's still working because we haven't associated this knuckle since this is a web server knuckle it must be associated to our web server subnet okay there you go so we created a knuckle um not done yet let's see the result okay so we allowed already the incoming traffic from our web server and it seems like it's not working anymore <laughs> why because um our traffic is now restricted it's using the rules from this web server knuckle okay and some of the traffic will fall to the explicit deny all okay especially the outbound rule see that the outbound rule states all traffic will be denied okay and let's go back to our web server okay as you can see it's not responding and eventually it will time out there you go it just timed out so what I'm gonna do is I will add two new rules I'm gonna add rule number 100 and 101 now for the outbound rules we're going to specify the traffic towards to the database okay so I'm gonna add the database traffic which is my SQL Aurora TCP 3306 and uh, I will also be specific to 10.10.20.0/24, which is the subnet of our database server. What else? I will also need to add uh, the outbound return traffic, okay, which is coming from the public network. So this is port 1024 to 65535, and uh, the destination will be all traffic quadruple zero slash zero okay so I'm gonna click save now okay and let's go back to our Mozilla web browser I'm gonna hit refresh hit refresh and as you can see our web applications are back to normal it's working properly okay next um, although it's working properly everything's working well we still need to create new rules under database server knuckle okay now again if I associate this knuckle to our database server subnet will not be able to access this web applications okay the both the tests 
uh, actually you will be able to uh, connect to the test page the Apache web server but not to the blog page because we are still unable to connect to our database server okay web server is fine no problem okay test page is or has responded what is not responding is the database and uh, we'll get an error um, in another few seconds so what we're going to do is we are going to add inbound rules as well as outbound rules okay this time it would be less because we are just trying to permit the traffic coming from and to the web server okay so i'm gonna edit inbound rule okay and then i will add rule number 100 just one and i will add mysql where is mysql there you go okay and the source will be our web server which is 10.10.10.0 24 subnet okay i'm gonna click save changes next is i will add the outbound rules okay i'm gonna add new rule number 100 and this time this will be the return traffic okay return traffic 1024 265535 and the subnet again is the subnet of the web server 10.10.10.0 slash 24 i'm gonna click save changes now now let's go back to our application as you can see as expected gateway timeout because a few seconds ago our web server is still unable to contact our database server now after adding this inbound and outbound rules of our database knuckle as i hit refresh it should work properly there you go and that is knuckle or network access control list next part we're going to talk about the design and architecture of our lab environment and also the difference between security groups and knuckle